glycerin, or vegetable glycerin as you commonly will see it listed on a label to kind of clean up the name. It's funny when you take a something innocuous like the name vegetable and put it next to the name of something that sounds oh, a little more chemical, a little more suspicious like glycerin. They put it there to make it a little more friendly, right? Well, it's, it's not the end of the world. I, I don't know that glycerin would be considered a superfood perhaps, um, but glycerin is something which is made in your body. Your body synthesizes it. You don't need to have dietary consumption of glycerin because your body is making it all the time. Um, now, glycerin can indeed be isolated from a variety of different plants. Uh, most commonly, it's gonna be coming from uh, soy. Soy glycerin is the most common form, but then you also see it coming from canola, from coconut, from flax. You get it from quite a few different places. It naturally, like something like a, a flax or a coconut glycerin to me are gonna be ideal. Um, it doesn't make a huge difference, in fact, where it's coming from, as long as it's pure. Uh, because it's, it's just an isolated molecule. So like, let's say you get it from soy. You might think, oh, soy and the estrogens and, and, and all these other problems that come from soy, like the, the, the goitrogens. Isn't that an issue? No, because those don't come along with the glycerin. However, glycerin extraction is not always a totally clean business. You can have residues of hexane left over in the glycerin. And this is obviously not ideal. And in certain people, for example, who have already say a weak liver or have some liver issues it can cause headaches in them for example and, and not be helping out their situation generally now what effect does glycerin have in the body let's assume it's clean it's pure it's pretty good glycerin um, this is going to generally not affect blood sugar too much there's some, some different opinions and different contradictory research around whether or not glycerin will affect blood sugar levels but glycerin, one, it has a lot of sweetness to it. It's very sweet. So it can in fact act as a sweetener. Uh, then glycerin, then glycerin is also going to act as an emulsifier. So it smooths things out, give them a nice uh, texture and brings together the fat and the water molecules. And it's also able to act as a preservative. So it is probably, I'm guessing, in this drink that you're looking at for that reason, that it's in there to act as a, a preservative to extend the shelf life. So what is glycerin actually doing when it gets into your body? When glycerin comes into the body, it is actually driving water absorption. So it's actually driving more water into the body, which can be good in a certain way um, and is used sometimes in an athletic setting to optimize hydration, uh, but it also stops you from urinating as much. So it's, it's gonna hold water in the body and it can lead to some water retention in people who have a hard time already with, with excessive water retention, that might not really be so great. Coming from the other end of things, uh, if you're having a hard time going to the bathroom, using glycerin rectally uh, can actually draw a lot of water in to the colon and help get things moving. Uh, but that's probably not where you're planning on putting this this uh, fasting drink that you've got there. So I would be really careful about consuming a fasting drink. It's got glycerin in it. You know, maybe it's just only the smallest trace amount, which is possible, you gotta do a little more research. Um, but to me, it's not something that you would wanna have in any significant quantity while on a fast, in case it could affect your fasted state. And, you know, water retention, generally not something that most people are super excited about. Now, it, there is a little bit of research suggesting possible performance enhancement uh, for exercise in, in sprints. Um, so there's a little bit of something going on there. But to me, there's so many more interesting things uh, in the herbal world, I would say, and in supplements as well, for um, optimizing athletic performance that don't have the potential downsides of glycerin. So glycerin, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it should be coming from a pure source, um, but it's not something that you really want to be consuming a lot of all the time, um, especially, yeah, well, it depends on your health goals. Uh, but for certain health goals, like weight loss, for example, which is a reason a lot of people would do something like fasting, um, it, to me, just doesn't make sense in that context. So I hope that helps provide some insight there. Uh, glycerin is definitely a very interesting and novel ingredient. Um, one that I've paid attention to for, for quite some time for a variety of reasons, uh, but not one that I would really want to be consuming a lot of.
on a regular basis. Trace amounts, clean glycerin source, no big deal at whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, quantity really with anything makes such a big difference. The wrong quantity of anything turns it from something innocuous or beneficial into something that's really not good at all. So it just, it all really depends on the context and the quantity, I would say. So thank you guys again so much for joining me for this video. If it has been interesting or helpful to you in any way, do me a favor, please leave us a like down below. It really helps to support us and allow our videos to then be shown to more people. Uh, and, and then that leads to us being able to grow our business more. And then we have more, more time and bandwidth to share more information with you. So it's a, it's a win-win all around. I hope you'll see it the same way. And thank you again so much for joining me today, guys. Really appreciate your time and hope you're all having a beautiful day. Look forward to seeing you all again soon.